Hi, Kelly. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, it feels like I've spoken to you before because I always listen to your podcast and I, your voice is so familiar. And uh, I would actually like to start like with my other podcast to ask you if you have any daily practice or anything that you do that keeps you grounded or maybe even like open or whatever you feel like sharing right now please do yeah I love that you, you're making me think for a moment here going what is my daily practice I don't have oh people are going to yell at me for this one I don't have much of a daily practice but um I have to go with my wherever my vibration takes me so there will be times where I'm like I wake up in my bed and I place my hands in my heart and I tell myself I know my heart today, or here's my heart, here's the connection. And other days I'm just kind of going, oh, I need nature. I just want to sit outside in the silence. Um, or, oh, I really want to move my body. It wants to shake or move or do different things. Um, not much of a dancer, but but more of like just movement, just, oh, what is my energy inside me? So I have mul many, many practices depending on my mood and the frequency of where we are collectively. I'm just, I just kind of go with it. So yeah, that's a good question though. Thank you. I love that answer. And I would say that I'm kind of the same I, because it, every day is so different and we have different energy levels and different needs. And we're so cyclical that it differs from period to period and week to week. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm so excited because you're actually the first uh, spirit baby or baby spirit medium or spirit baby medium that has been on here. We've had some other uh, intuitives and everything, but this is this is so new. So maybe you can, for those that haven't heard your podcast before, maybe if you want to introduce who you are and what you do, and maybe also how you got into this practice. Yeah, absolutely. So I call myself Spirit Baby Medium, Medical Intuitive and Mentor. And it is actually a term, I think a lot of people are using the term now, but it's actually a term I invented. It did not exist like over eight years ago. And I remember just feeling like, what do I do? How do I explain it? Because I don't feel like I'm, I'm a, a death medium in that sense. But like, what do we call that space of conscious conception, the before, you know, spirit baby intuitive, spirit baby communicator, pre-birth communicator. And I was like, you know, I'm a spirit baby medium. That feels right. And it came to me, my gosh, probably what the awareness around it was probably 13, 14 years ago, but I wasn't doing the work yet. I just started to hear things from pregnant women. And I started to share those stories with women. And they were like, you're right. Because then I was, I thought it was all my imagination. And I thought, oh, I'm just, a, you know, as a child, I had a very high active imagination. But what I realized is that it's not just fantasy, a delusional imagination. It's literally tapping into other levels of consciousness. And the more I evolve in my own connection to who I am, I see a different, like a completely different world than what we're actually earth living in. And I'm really like, and it's not easy because my mind is like, really captured into the belief system of this world right and so but this is good for me I'm like shifting around connecting and so yeah it just feels like I don't think anybody goes I'm going to be a spirit baby medium someday or you know I want to be this when I grow up it just feels like it just happened and it just kind of has expanded and as you shared with my podcast I have almost 135 episodes it's called spirit baby radio and from that, I, you know, programs came and sessions and workshops and, you know, products and things to really to facilitate the connection of conscious consumption, pregnancy and healing with birth loss for so many people. I feel like around the world, everybody has such a different connection to the intuitive, to the spiritual. And I, I really know how to, I feel like I could step out and see the larger energy around that and go, well, what is your method? What is your way? Let's nurture and love that part of you. And so there's so much more to say about that, but I'm going to take a little pause here if that answers some of your question. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. It's so beautiful. Like, and also um, that there's so much in this spiritual world. And I mean, I'm sure that some people listening today 
didn't even know about this part because mm -hmm. we always talk, think about mediumship as something that w we can channel someone that has lived and in this uh, embodiment and then left, but we're not thinking what is, how do we connect with the spirit before mm -hmm. they came into, or before they come into physical embodiment. And I think th I'm always interested to hear from intuitives, like how that, um, like, how, because we all discover this in different ways and different mm -hmm. paths in our lives. Like, how did you even, come into like how, how what happened in your life that led you to see and start communicating with these yeah. spirit babies I think that um that's yeah I came I feel like I was as I shared a little bit early we talked a little bit earlier and I, I was born through trauma like even just the birth and everything and my mother just her own consciousness she had abuse and mental illness and so I was like, what am I coming into? What am I holding? What is this energy? And just even that, but I feel like it's it, my reality is even before that, who was I as a spirit baby? What is my spark of light? And how do I bring that in? I do feel like that gets revealed, right? As we live in our human suits, <laughs> trying to understand very self-involved because you know they're working through whatever it is they're working through and I started to discover at a young age probably after puberty not younger because people are like oh there wasn't like I was two years old and I was like oh you know I'm all have all these psychic awarenesses I feel like I've actually shut down of the many many first years because it did I wasn't sure this was a safe place to be in and I don't know who these people taking care of me but I did have some I actually did have some other memories coming through that I did have abilities when I was a toddler, but they weren't encouraged. They were kind of looked over like, you know, and, and so puberty hits, which I hear is very common when puberty hits, things just like broke open. And then I remember at 15, I just started to discover the trees. They're talking um, animals. I could hear them people. I can hear them. And I'm like, and then I just start really sharing what I heard from people. And everybody was like, Hmm, how does she know that? Why, why does she know that? What does that even mean? Right. But I just started to facilitate that connection at a very young age. And so I didn't put it more into a, into a more career space until I studied clinical psychology. And I, I like, I don't like boxes and to, it broke out of that box. And then I realized I've, I've been, I've always been this way since I came to this world. And so, but I've allowed myself to go deeper into the acceptance of that part of myself. So then it, it becomes bigger and bigger because even in the past eight years, I'd say in I think eight years in spirit baby world, um, how I began in the, in the, in the work with others is so different now. So different. Like it's literally like night and day to me because in the beginning I wasn't sure our, our world was very different, but now it's like, actually it feels kind of effortless and extremely easy. Um, and just what I get to see is very different now. Like I never saw ancestral links. I see them now. I see more organ energy and things I, I haven't saw before. Actually, it was 2019. I had major spiritual breaks and changes. <laughs> Who knew, right? 2020 it was probably preparation and a, on an unconscious level. And I was, I remember in 2018, 2019, it's like, I got to get these things done. I have to get them done. I was like, really like, you know, and then just developing into that inner space with myself and and so I feel like it came at that age, at a really young age. And then it's just been always in development with, with meeting the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I feel like that is the story of most of us that are mm -hmm. working in this or, or open to this type of communication that it it's kind of like initiated in very early and it can has to do with things that we experience through childhood and um, I mean each each trauma or each uh, thing in life that we talked about this before we started recording yeah. about the other aspect of spiritual growth rather than just like ascension and enlightenment and all of that that sometimes the the descent is also a part of our initiation and mm. if if it started that early for you it's like just pushed you into yeah. this and you're like 
have to open up to kind of survive, but also like to, to fulfill your soul's purpose. So I think that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing your. Yeah. Your and I feel like you, you make a really good point there is that sometimes, you know, we have small and big traumas that kind of really mold us. Right. And we, we, we have, we kind of have an option of what we want to do with those traumas. Cause I hear a lot of women, they're like, you know, with their conception journey or their struggle or their trauma. But I always feel like we, we can heal through those. We can, we can set our, let's say our dial, our, our connection to not be so invested. And, and if we are very active and triggered that it wants us, right. It's like, it wants us to do some work around it. And then we get to evolve through it because I know I, why I say that trauma is such a big topic. It's probably a whole other podcast to do, but women will say, well, I'm traumatized and I, am I allowed to be a mother? Can, you know, is it the, you know, is it the obstacle? And I'm like, or is it the block is what I hear a lot. And I says, you know, it could be navigating obstacles, but it's not going to be like, oh, your trauma, that's it. You can't do anything. You can't have a kid. You can't have a family. Because I've seen very traumatic women and couples have children. And so I, I just feel like I want to say that. So if people are like, oh, I'm too traumatized. I can't have a baby. Or I don't know what that means. I don't feel like our world is set up that way. I do feel like, you know, there's always ways to heal and move through. But it's our perception connected to our experience that then gets to become something or not. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's so true and beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm also curious, like when, <clears throat> when you started to like from the, it, the, the um, I think an important thing is that uh, when we start working with our higher senses that it can come in in so many different ways mm -hmm. because some people, think about it as like in the movies when you see something but it, we have so many different perceptions and uh, I'm wondering like how the spirit babies came through like how you started perceiving mm, these yeah. souls yeah <clears throat> so there's kind of two different ways that I perceive um it's more of the feeler and more the visual visual and so <clears throat> this is some like little inner spiritual thing that I've played with. I, I'm a really strong, I call myself a physical empath. I could really feel physical resonance. Like even if I'm around people that have body pain, I'll just be like, oh, this feels weird right here. And then someone's like, oh, I just hit my chin. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like really hypersensitive to that. And I'm, I've done a lot of work around, okay, my, the separation of my energy and not. And so, but it's still, and so I would feel things and I'd put them into form, into my vision. Because, and it sounds really confusing to say that. And again, the language of energy is such a unique language. It's not like touching. It's not like seeing. It's not like hearing. It's its own language. And I've dabbled into the many, you know, inner see, like inner seeing, even sometimes outside seeing. I've had, I think most of us have that either with colors or, or energies. Feeling is really strong for me. Uh, even a knowing is very strong for me more now than ever. Um, even sound, sometimes sound, but not big into like sound stuff, um, even taste and smell, which is, was really wild to be like, psychic smell is a real thing. And it's real, it's real. And it's interesting how it was affirmed in different, um, different experiences. I'm like, what is this? And so I feel like everybody is in a, set to a different awareness with that. And so this is what I tend to really strongly connect with. So when I see a being come to me, I always feel like I have to create an invitation. I'm not just like, where's your spirit babies? Where are they? Like say someone's in conception. Sometimes there's more than one energy <clears throat> and I have to distinguish between the different energies. And so I always create an invitation because I'm, it's another soul. It's another being. They could not talk to me or they could talk to me. And I, usually I like to persuade them to talk to me because I'm safe and I'm okay. And I've done this a lot there. There's like a relationship between those worlds. And, and then I will feel like an image come to me. Sometimes it's, you know, a boy, a girl, sometimes there's no gender. And then I just, I work with that specific frequency and then I'll see like, they'll show me playful things or images or symbols. And then I have to decode them. And sometimes I don't know, I will tell people, I'm not sure what this means. Um, I'm not claiming to have every single answer. And sometimes people have to sit with the information 
And I record everything for that reason, because people really need to sit with the information and, and people will reach me back out, which is fun and say, hey, remember we said all these things and we'll be like, I don't know what's happening. And then it all made sense later. Or it was like, oh, this came, this actually happened. Something you said actually happened later. And it was like, oh, okay. Um, and so I perceive it as, again, and I see it as like, like I said, I'll see an image. I'll see a child's face. I'll see their hair sometimes. Sometimes they don't want to show me those things. I'll see siblings. Sometimes if there's, if there's been like a stillbirth or an infancy death, the siblings will like the baby spirit will come from that place and talk in that way. And in pregnancy and conception is a little similar energy to me, but pregnancy, I always feel like the little baby walks around the mom's body. <laughs> That's how I see it. And I always go, okay. In pregnancy, I go, what do you want to say? Is mom okay? Do you want me to tell you anything about her body? And sometimes we would be like, oh, mommy has a sore back or her shoulder hurts. Um, she needs to rest. And usually I get confirmation that that's true. Uh, or baby's like, hey, we need some vitamin D or we need some good nutrition. Or um, baby will be like, or we'll look at the emotions. Oh, baby knows that you're feeling this way or partner is feeling this way. And um, if you're okay. I, I feel like I, I pull everything through an inspired positive light for a reason, because I do feel like there's a lot of other spirit Ruby intuitors that could be a little dark. <laughs> and I don't think we're setting up people for shadow work unless you're really skilled in your own shadow work, right? Um, you can't do that. And so there's such an interesting language in, in the spirit baby community in the world and how to understand. And so that I'm hoping that translates well, a little bit of how um, I would see it. And to me, remember too, I've been doing this for a lo long time and I've met with a lot of energy of people. So it's just automatic for me. You know, I don't go around reading people, but I went to a party this weekend, a birthday party and a woman comes over pregnant and I, I have to shut my energy down. Um, otherwise I start reading her energy, but right away I was like, boy, I knew she was having a boy. It was so strong. And I was like, um, none of my business, turn away, none of your business. <laughs> And then she's like, oh, I just found out I'm having a boy. And I'm in my head, I'm going, I know. <laughs> okay, you know. Um, but uh, again, yeah, so that, you know, there's so much more to say on that topic. But that, I feel like that gives an idea. It's like the senses, you know, like using those intuitive kind of psychic senses to, to bring connection and awareness. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And so such a beautiful gift to have and of course with any type of high sensitivity higher perception it's always about like finding a balance within oneself mm -hmm. because it can get overwhelming to have so much come like we already have so much coming in yeah. and, and then that part as well and I mean it can come into our I've seen I've, I've, I see a lot of children in, in my dreams and it can be children mm. that I know or it can be others. And it's like, it's, it's always like very important messages and uh, like, you know, so it's so many levels where, where they come in and um, the way they interact. And I, just curious, I'm not sure if I've heard it uh, on your podcast. How, how is it with your work and do you have any like angelic uh, beings or any other um, things that come in, in maybe in correlation with the babies or around, or do you have mostly just the, the soul of someone who is going to incarnate? So there's so many different realms of consciousness and dimensions. And years and years ago, before the baby work, I was very connected to the angelic realms. And it felt really empowering, really good. And I'm always changing where my vibrational space is. I have a more of a star galactic energy, which is I, which is my foundation, really. But do I talk to beings to get information for babies? I don't in that way. And I know people do spirit guides and angels. I honestly believe in what I teach is we, if we're an embodiment of those energies, we have to go to us as the source because that's where information could be misinterpreted through people. It's like here, let, here, not to, not to downplay spirit guides and angels if people use them, but I was experimenting for, a while. I was like, maybe I'll go to some, you know, a guide. And then I was like, wow, this, it felt like too much work. 
And I was like, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to go direct and see what energy comes through and make sure it's that energy connected to that person. And there's a whole schooling in that, of course. And, um, and so that's how, you know, so I don't, you know, I used to do a little prayer and things before my sessions, but I actually feel like people talk about they live in meditation or they live connected already. I've really worked hard on where my, my body is, where my energy boundary is. And I do get a lot of straggling energies from other dimensions all the time. And, but I'm like, okay, where's my cleansing? Where am I at? I work with a somatic therapist who's like, who does healing work with sounds and stuff is like, I, I know when I need to be like, okay, where am I? I get caught up in the emotional world. And so of course, having a good um, self-care routine is really crucial. I think for anybody who has perception and sensitivity, but even in the work, but for me, I've been doing it. I'm in this space. I'm in it. I call it my healing room. And it's like, when I come in every, anyone who comes in this, my house is chaotic out there. I have two boys. When people come, I should say three boys with my husband. When people come in the healing room, they're like, Ooh, what is this? I love seeing people's faces because it, it's a totally different portal you enter here. And so I feel like this is the the calm the you know, I have all these beautiful crystals and, you know, bowls and, and you could see my, my images from my book on the wall. It's just all very creative conception, light energy, love energy. And so um, that's the long answer to what you're saying. And so, yeah, or ancestors, actually, I should say. Uh, when I say ancestors, how I use that term is passed on loved ones. I, I have seen grandfathers, aunts, uncles um, in, in the afterlife, sometimes in the current life, babies will be like, hey, you know, there's something about the mom that's coming up. And sometimes I'll get a name and I'm like, oh, I don't not like a name person, but sometimes they, I hear names properly. And sometimes I don't. And uh, and so there is a connection with relatives, I would say, more than anything. And um and yeah, on that journey with people. So people are connecting with their aunt, their uncle, their mother, father that passed on. And they're like asking for that support with spirit baby. I would absolutely say do that. There is energy in that. And you can also, of course, go to other different realms and whatever. I feel like whatever people resonate with, right? It's like we talked about the goddess. It's like that, you know, we can see it as an archetype. We can see it as an actual master. There's no right or wrong way to do, but what we're embodying and how we're like sitting with that embodiment. Um, it reminds me, I, I have these beautiful goddess cards and I, in my seven week course, I just ended it with the goddesses and we all picked, I picked these cards and every woman, I said, this is what you, this is your goddess. This is not some separate woman. This is you. And what are you going to do with her power? Right. And it was like, really, it was fun. And it was really beautiful. And some people really sat in deep reflection with it. And some email me back, like, wow, I can really see why this message was really strong for me. And then they get to do, you know, what they want with it on their conception journey, like really that feminine, that divine. And my whole thing is co-creation with the portal and, and seeing, you know, what comes from that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I really agree and feel the same when it comes to um, how we can tap into these things in so many different ways. And kind of like let it come naturally because mm -hmm. usually it's not something that we want to force to come and I think it's very clear like throughout our journey like okay not like you said like okay now um, I'm really called to connect with this type of uh, frequency and and then mm -hmm. maybe yeah and it can go up and down and and have so many different purposes but you're still like like opening this this um, gate of, of what or this flow through you in any way and probably for the same purpose it's probably to help others or to uh, somehow support and raise the frequency of the world in some way mm -hmm. so that's also like something to keep in mind to whatever we tap into uh, consciously that it's like not knowing also why we're doing that and what is what is the intention what are we trying to do because that can help us to to see like what path to take as well it it really um guides us yeah and it's authentic really mm -hmm. right yeah it's kind of like a lot of the women that i support they feel the, i think the one thing that really attracts my kind of work is that i, I let women be in fear 
I let them feel crappy. I let them feel like, oh, I don't have to fix this and be positive right now. I'm like, no, you actually don't. You're okay. You're okay authentically being angry, being sad, being in grief. And I know it's uncomfortable because our world hasn't really been mature enough on our emotional chemistry. And so everybody has to suppress and deny and hide and push. And so <clears throat> we hear the term wild woman. And I'm like, no, that's just called normal, actually. Um, and so, so I, hear, I hear what you're saying. There's, yeah. And I'm also curious to know uh, when you're working in this. So you, I want to come back to that uh, yeah. in the end, also your course. I'm wondering when you're working with, if someone is listening to this and what is your main, like if you have people connecting with you and want to have like a session with you, what mm -hmm. is usually, like, what would you say is the most um, yeah. asked for? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good question because right now it's changes, but majority over the years is, um, and I was surprised in the beginning, I was like working with pregnancy and then a lot of women conception, infertility, conception. It's not my personal journey, but it doesn't mean I can't be of service to it, right? That's the thing. Oops, sorry. My new computer's doing weird things. Um, and so I'd say the woman that struggles with infertility, sometimes, you know, a few years, sometimes longer. Um, I've actually worked with women that have had babies after a long journey. Um, and I would say some using IVF or IUI, using intervention, I have a certain way and an, an awareness around intervention and how to intertwine that in, in, a, in a space. It's not always just natural. So I get a lot of challenging. I actually welcome the most challenging people and they're like, oh, I have some major reproductive stuff for this or that, because I'm like, gosh, there's so many missing pieces because we're not just biology, but we keep continuing to be brainwashed that we are. And that's a hard one to go off the path and really shut down and go, who am I? Where am I? And is this really true outside of me? And so I do feel like our inner manual is inside of us. And so fertility, I would say, um, typically women, couples as well, same sex, you know, non same sex partnerships, uh, solo conception is really big, right, which you do then need to do intervention. And um, I would say every week, um, miscarriage, I, I never I'd say like 95% of the women have had some type of birth loss, if like, or loss of like nothing. And so miscarriage is a very high percentage that comes to me as well. Some term, termination too, I've had that, but, um, but mostly I'd say for conception and miscarriage is really big. And then again, it comes in droves and, and then I'll run around and play in the pregnancy energy. And, and sometimes people are, you know, concerned or fearful in their pregnancy and then birth loss, but that's a little different because it's, it feels like a whole different area. So I've literally created an energy. I call it the afterlife of spirit baby, which is all around miscarriage, termination, stillbirth, infancy, SIDS. And it's a very small community I've created um, around just grief, ritual, healing, bereavement. And what is that connection with? I call the child of light is a term I kind of came up with to honor the sons and daughters of people in, in that space. And so again, a little bit of all areas, but mostly around really even I, I can even say from loss to conception is a really big one too. But even uh, like I said, the loss of like, oh my, like I'm going, I'm going, where's the baby? Like what's happening? And, um, and it's nice when I could work with people on a longer term energy and they're willing to actually sit with the changing energy within them to get to that place, you know? Yeah, that's so beautiful. And like you said, and something that is not tapped into as much i think in the spiritual community since we always talk about the like the spiritual path of a woman you know going from maiden to mother to crone it's so like mm. ingrained in in our mm -hmm. social norms and then um in but there is a space where it's the path is not that clear and mm. it, having this uh, spiritual take and support and um, healing what you're working with with women that have have really either yeah because it's like there's loss in different ways there's a 
they can be a physical loss, but they can also be a loss of a dream or a loss of a mm-hmm. hope or a loss of a future. Uh, and it can also be, um, so it's, the loss is on so many levels. And I feel like with the work that you do, you're providing this very important support for, because we have so many other support areas in spirituality and, and in, you know, everything that we're practicing, but there's not a lot like you, what you also mentioned, like the grief and all of that. And this is for me, like exactly what, what we also talked about the descent and the uh, like complete acceptance and Mm. full like trust the process of trust through that when you go through these gateways into your Mm -hmm. own underworld and into your own shadows it really opens up a different process Um, and having that support like from someone like you and then maybe giving hope or giving insights or just creating this stronger bond or connection in one way is so beautiful because there, like you said, there's so many spaces we can tap into that, the mm-hmm. ancestral space. We can do so much work. But yeah, this is, this is so beautiful. And then seeing that maybe also the norms of how to become a parent or a mother mm-hmm. has changed. And um, I've also worked in acupuncture with women who are like are doing their pregnancy journey alone, for example. And, mm. um, and then also like, How about children that are not biologically yours, but you're connected Mm -hmm. spiritually? I mean, that's also a different facet. Um, So it's so beautiful. Uh, Do do you have any other thoughts on that? No, when you were saying that, it's true because some women will come to me with um, um, embryo adoption, I call it, or, um, you know, sperm donation or... Um, even I call it a borrowed womb. I think I did an episode on that, but surrogacy and stuff, because, you know, the journey, it can be, I feel like people overthink the journey maybe too much, or they're not really finding where their center is in it. Or maybe there's even a lesson in what they're getting to. Cause what I, what I say, what I've said for years is that when there's this conception struggle, like for some people, it's easy. They're very, they have this fertile, like lifeline between energy and they just show up pregnant Um, And some people they're like, gosh, I have to work so hard because it's not a judgment of you're a good person or bad person. There's lineage, typically energetic lineage, I call it between people's lives that they're literally living in the moment to heal and fix. There's sometimes there's nothing they have to go and, oh, I have to fix the ovary or I have to go make this better. I'm not going to say don't improve these things with food and exercise, but then there's an undertone of energy that's just kind of there. And it's like, what is that part? Like, can we recognize that part? Can we be with that? And I really love is, I don't know if you're familiar with Carolyn Mace. Um, she's world now world renowned medical intuitive, but she doesn't really do the work anymore in that way. I think she does a lot of programs and things. And she back in the day with Dr. Norm Sheely, they have a book <clears throat> called medical intuition and, and really Carolyn, again, her accuracy is very high. And she's like the one with the medical intuitive skills, incredible. And remember I was reading and she said that everything she experiences through information with people is very symbolic. And so it's, she's literally, people think we get things literal, but things are very symbolic, but in their book, they found people that had sicknesses or I even say infertility. They don't talk about infertility, but it's the same idea of going, oh, let's fix this, let's fix this, but we couldn't do it. And they started to go into past lives, ancestral energy. And all of a sudden, what did the doctor say? Oh, spontaneous remission. We don't know. Miraculous recovery. Because then they went to the root of the story and the story now is being diluted and the consciousness of the story is like, whoa. And so I have referred people out. I have a nice referral list. I go, go find, you know, do past life regression if that calls to you. Constellation therapy, energy work, body work, biofields. I'm like, go experiment. Because if you can't feel where you are in your body, you may have to do these other things. And it's so beautiful and amazing when we can just be in our bodies and not feel like oh like all these empaths so many empaths in the world right now they're being so awakened and activated your body is like speaking and talking and then it's like well I'm just covered in all this other stuff and then you're just frustrated and and then it's like what's happening and so I feel like you know on the spiritual path of people on the fertility journey and pregnancy 
there's, you know, it's such a unique experience. It's not like, you know, we, we've talked about that before. And even this time, you know, my experience with my reality and pregnancy and, and that it was, it's going to be different than someone else because I have my own trauma. I have my own reality. I have my own positive and negative experiences. And so that's my, my awareness and my connection to, to the experience of myself. And I do feel like we need to, I've been shouting this for like years and I feel like more now people are listening <laughs> to go oh wait a second we do need to follow our inner rhythm right more now than ever and it's like but what does that even mean and how can we begin to you know die not even dissect deconstruct our old belief systems which most people will can be completely shut down as I say that with my own frequency but really it is it really is about where are we coming into as ourselves and can we really listen can we listen? And that conception journey, that connection with spirit baby is potent and it's instinctual. You know, I always joke around and say, it's not just new age metaphysics. It's really an instinct. You, you know, the indigenous tribal people aren't new age, but they connect in that instinctual way with the light energy. There was this old, I don't know if it was, if it was a true saying or not, but I really liked it. It was like Aboriginal African tribe where the father was the spirit baby communicator, not the mother. And he calls in the spirit. And, and, and again, I think I wrote this down to find a resource because I thought, what are these beautiful stories in the world that people have with that connection? And why in more developed cultures like in you know, North America and other countries, we have to work really hard <laughs> to remember what's already here. That's what's interesting. It's like over technology, of course, as we know. It really, it does something to our electromagnetic field. And then we kind of forget, but now I feel like we get to come back with nature and life. I'm like nature because I see my big oak trees outside and the beautiful, warm, sunny wind today. And so it's like coming back to like, we are that right. And then, and then seeing that, what that is. That is so beautiful. I love that. And I'm super curious because you mentioned your course i actually listened to a different podcast and she had um done your course as well uh dr oh, nice. maria dr. oh maria. yes yeah. <laughs> i know her yeah yeah i love her her podcast too. and yeah um, and yeah i wanted to ask you because you said you just finalized one course uh and what, oh i what... know i just came to the end of co-creation a journey with spirit baby i'm so oh. excited by it i'm I would love to keep offering it throughout the year, but you know how timing, timing with dates and life yeah. is so challenging. And it was so beautiful yes. with these women to come together in this really, cause it's really not, I'm not just giving information, right? It may feel like that. I am setting my tone for frequency of fertility. And so my tone in the presence of, of those spaces of those other people, they can either change and move with it or not, right? I mean, it's really, and then doing one-on-one -on -one with a lot of these women, it, we go deeper. And um, someone for the first time got really good um, genetic embryos for the first time. Someone and told me they're pregnant. And so um, again, I don't, I don't claim to make them into these things. It's like, kind of like, you know, showing up in the space with people. I know the potentiality of people. I, 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 I've always seen people, I could see the soul of people, even in the worst person, I could see their soul. And, um, and it's sad because the sadness in that is I've seen destruction and anger and sickness with people. And I, but I'm like, gosh, their light is so bright and it's so present. And what is that? And that's a whole other journey. But, um, so yeah, so coming out of, uh, co-creation, but I am actually opening up an academy. Oh my gosh. Fingers crossed. It's coming out in April. Um, because I've done it before as mentoring students of spirit baby intuitives that want to do what, that want to do what I do. But of course, again, your own brand. And, um, I had a mentorship. I shut it down last year because it was, it needed time to marinate. You know how that works. You're like, I know it's not, something's not ready. I got to put it to bed, let it like, let it do its thing. And so now it's the spirit baby Academy, which is more of a six month experience. And I'm very excited by it. It's going to be really fun and awesome. And people are going to walk away changed and, and with an experience to then do their work in the world. You know, I've, I've tracked doctors and therapists and mothers and healers and spiritualists to go, oh yeah, I talk to spirit babies, but I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> like, what do I do with that? I'm like, here's what you do with it. 
you keep moving with it because there's no like really there's not a lot of books you know we talked about that earlier there's not a lot of manuals and there's a few I have a, I have a nice book list that I share with the academy because I'm like looking for that book too like in and and it's like there's you know and I'm working on my book in the me- middle of it but that's a whole other thing and so yeah there's I do feel like getting that community connection whether co-creation on that conception journey or feeling like you're ready for that. I I feel like we do well in community, right? It's like, that's the really, this is the potent medicine of 2020, right? And 2022, 2023 and on is that we need each other to to change and be in different frequencies at different times. And then to know our truest potential of light is so there. And and again, you were a spirit baby (laughs) at one point. And, um, and this being you're like, you know, we're inviting these children into our reality into our connection to who we are we have to drop into such trust and such trust in that really and love more than anything and um because when i stepped into pregnancy i wasn't like i didn't have it all figured out i was scared you know i had my issues that came up but i trusted that communication with my child and it turned out to be you know a lot of different stories which i won't get into but it 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 panned out, let's say (laughs) it made sense to trust it. Even if I was unsure and fearful at times, I was like, no, this being is saying this, this is what we're going with. Not what the midwives or the doctors even say. I know people are like really freaked out about that, but I've heard so many stories and I've worked with so many people where they're like, no, the doctor is telling me I'll never conceive. And they said, but my spirit, I feel it. I feel it. Walk away and have children, children, not even one child. So we have to be really careful with what, what information we're really taking in and where this is why I push about embodiment, just knowing where we are and it's okay not to have the answers. It's okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's been so interesting to hear from you and uh, the work that you do. And if people do want to work with you or check out the, the, academy that's coming up next month yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> now we're in march so yeah <laughs> yeah exactly first of march uh, how how can they find you so the best place is just website um spiritbabymedium.com soulbabycommunication.com mm. and in there you can find emails and you know um instagram at spiritbabymedium anything with spirit baby medium in it <laughs> yeah and Pretty I will much. put the links definitely okay, in yeah. the show notes so people can just click there as well. And I want to thank you so much for uh, being here today and sharing your journey. And I'm also looking forward to continue listening to your podcast and learning so much from you. So I want to thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me and your beautiful energy and your presence is so healing. And I really appreciate this conversation. I feel like we could probably talk about it for hours and days. Yeah, definitely. And so thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you so much.